Okay, we're back on the internet. What does the panel think of Obama, President Obama's announcement that he will try again to address equal pay for women? Is this a fool's errand in this Congress? Isn't everything? Yes. yes, this is a fool's errand. It's not going to happen. Uh, they, they just don't have the votes. I mean, that, his whole State of the Union address was sort of a laundry list of things he wants but are, aren't really going to happen. There's so much talk about, or there was the last couple of months after the election, about, well, they're going to find areas of common ground. Uh, what? The, what? Even if he said he would do what they already said they like, as soon as he says he likes it, they say no. Then they don't like it. That's happened before. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, black tracking, we call it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, maybe, maybe some compromise on tax reform, maybe on trade. I mean, he's got to convince Democrats to get on board uh, with that. But, I mean, it's sort of small bore stuff. Okay. I actually have an exception proving the rule. The latest um, uh, military budget passed oh, yeah. the Armed Services Committee by 61 to 0. Yeah, that's the so one something thing they can agree, agree on. on yes. Is that we always need to rain death from above. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Brett, what do you make of the recent developments in Yemen? Yes, we, this week the president yeah. of Yemen fell, left the country, rebels took over. Are you confident in Obar Obama's foreign policy? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> and his approach to dealing with this new st instability? No, and what's terrifying is that back in September, uh, he cited Yemen as a success story of American counterterrorism policy. And he, he should said, have seen the future. You are so right. Yes, because two weeks later, the government of Yemen effectively fell to the but, people we call. Hang on a second. All right. If you don't get the prediction right two years out, I understand. If you're the president and two weeks after, in a primetime address, you say Yemen is the way to go, and then the Houthi militia, who are an arm of, or a, a proxy for the Iranian government, take over, it's not, you're not being well informed by your intelligence advisors uh, to say just, just off the top of my head, a couple of examples. Bush, I looked into Putin's eyes, and he's a great guy. Uh, Bush, Maliki, he's our guy there in Iraq. Right, but we're talking about we're talking about Obama, and we're talking about what's happening in Yemen. <laughs> oh, I know. I'm just. I mean, it's great I mean, to switch the subject to Bush. It's not switching which is the subject. It's on the subject of presidents who made predictions that were right. then wrong. Yes, that were instantly proved wrong after a uh, after a prime time address. And what's worrisome is that we now have in Yemen, and this is serious. We now have in Yemen a country that is divided between an Iranian-backed militia, which which now has control over the other half of the Arabian Peninsula and al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula, which helped train the killers in Paris. So it means that when you create these ungoverned spaces, even if you think you're pursuing a successful counterterrorism uh, 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 model, you run the risk of having uh, jihad pursue you uh, outside well, of Arabia. A little unfair to blame Obama, since this thing has been <laughs> yeah. called the empty quarter for yeah. about two centuries. This, is, this has been an ungoverned <laughs> yeah. space no, for created, longer than, yeah. you know. Really, I mean. Really, we create Obama created them. I'm Before that, it was cool. No, what I'm saying is that if the president is going to go out of his way to cite Yemen as a great counter-terrorist success story, and it goes downhill very quickly, it behooves us to ask the president the same tough questions you asked of George W. Bush. Okay, uh, what if anything will happen with Boko Haram in Nigeria? Any chance for bold international action? Uh, yeah, everybody seems to have forgotten about the boys from Boko. One of, uh, is, actually, this is a really sad story because Nigeria actually used to be uh, have a strong army and be actually a fairly strong country. This is a completely corrupt, incompetent person running Nigeria who has actually made no effort whatsoever for his own political reasons not to get rid of Boko Haram. It's a disaster. And, and you don't call them Islamic terrorists either? Uh, uh, Boko Haram? Yeah. I call them thugs and horrible people. Okay, the New York Times said that there are 5,000, in their words, Islamic militant groups. We take out Islamic from all 5,000? That's all just a coincidence? <sighs> well, look, <laughs> this is a tough guy to argue with. <laughs> well, I mean, look, I have to, okay, so Bill, listen. Tell me hey, about it about makes you feel better. I feel like I'm in high school again where I'm just sitting there like, I'm not passing this class. <laughs> 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 so, there's no way you're going to do worse than me, so no, I, have I, at it. So, uh, all right. <laughs> I, I, so, I'll, what I'll That's confess true, to not. is being a propagandist. I just think if you call them Islamic, you're doing what they want you to do. So, I don't believe in doing what they want us to do. That's all. Yay. Don't you think that if you're, I mean, as a doctor, 
as a doctor, don't you have to name the disease in order to treat it? Yes, thank you. <laughs> yes, exactly. And naming is everything, and that's why I like to call them thugs and terrorists no, instead well, of Islamic well, that's, terrorists. That, that's kind of it's like that's kind of like Franklin Roosevelt in 1941 saying, <laughs> "My fellow Americans, we right. face a group of militarists who have taken over Germany, yeah. who have nothing to do with the country of Germany or the ideologies of nationalism or socialism." Well, yeah. come on, give it up. <laughs> you want it in the gym? Yeah, so, so to weigh in on, on the governor's side for a couple of, of points. So there are 5,000 of these groups, and they may well be Islamically connected thugs. That, you know, there are a billion people in the world who are largely peaceful uh, Muslims. I lived in Indonesia and Malaysia. Said, are, but we're not but nobody saying, denies no that. No one is denying but, but it is, that. It this is, is often, the straw man that we always okay. face in this argument. But, but, but it's connected to the other point. There's a really, it's difficult in the news media and politics to keep proportion on disaster, proportion on threats. There was this horrible, horrible episode in France where, what, 16 people were terribly murdered. And you say there's, what, thousands, hundreds, thousands in Nigeria that are like page A23 or something. So I think it's worth having proportion about the threats, proportion about uh, ha having some kind of consistent standard of, of our, our outrage but and should threat. The, but yeah. shouldn't the consistency be not to suddenly become cultural relativists when it comes to what Boko Haram but, does to girls in Nigeria, when it, come, when it comes to what Saudi Arabia does sure. to religious minorities, when it comes to what Iran does to gay Pakistan, people. Pakistan. Sure. Pakistan. A thousand but schools. On you know. I don't but have any problem with condemning those people. Great. Yeah. So, I mean, so what is the point? What is, the, what is the, culturally the point re relativistic is, about this? The point but, but, is that, you know, I but, see But the point is you're but, pretending that this has nothing to do with a civilization not, that is in no, crisis. No, I'm not pretending and by, the way, and by the way, if you want, if you want someone to attest to this, the president of Egypt went to Al-Azhar University, right. which is the heart of, of Islamic uh, religious theology, Sunni theology, and said, we have to change. So at right. least he but, is someone who is not trying to elide the, 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 the right. subject for yeah. the sake of politeness. There is a point this the government nothing made. nothing to do yes. with it. Jim, this is ahead. a crucial point. If you've lived outside the U.S. in these countries, you see that every time we call them Islamic terrorists, every time an American president, a British prime minister does that, it objectively increases the sympathy in places in, in Indonesia, in India. It, it just is the case. And so when naming makes our, our task harder, we should be careful about the way we get this. This is like being in a Harry you. Potter novel. Right. You know, and by the way, you know, there, there are a lot of Muslims now who disagree with you two, who say this makes our job harder. They say, you know, we want someone to stick up for our version of Islam, but when, when you won't admit what the other version is, it makes it harder for us. We need those people yeah. to stand up, yeah. and it's easier to stand up if they can distance themselves from what these people are doing. Let's stop talking about All this. Right. Because <laughs> <laughs> Does the panel have faith in the outcome of the nuclear talks with Iran should Congress stay out of it? I would say Congress should definitely you. stay out of it because yes. they're yeah. idiots on it. Yeah. Yes, yes. The, the thing, um, I was in D.C. just a day or two ago talking with a bunch of European representatives. Their great fear is that the Congress, through posturing, will make impossible something that's going to be difficult anyway. So the Congress, you know, they can just say whatever they want. They don't have to try to make these deals. So I pray to God of whatever faith that the Congress would stay out of this and let the various governments. Yeah, my view is th these things are going to collapse yeah. anyway, and the Congress shouldn't do something stupid and make yeah. it up, make it more likely. Why is it so objectionable to say that if the third round, not the first, yeah. the third round of negotiations fail, in that event, Sanctions will kick in because by Congress way, is incompetent way, to deal is, with foreign uh, policy. They don't well, know what they're doing. I would have loved, loved to have heard from that in say 2006, 2007, right. when the shoe was on. But on would the other you have foot. wanted a Democratic Congress in, in, during the George W. Bush administration to invite, say, the President of France to a joint session of Congress to criticize <laughs> the President <laughs> and discuss well, would you well, you want to I wouldn't have questioned the right to do it. It's a co-equal The wisdom, it's a co the wisdom of doing it. What is the wisdom, really, oh, of the Obama administration making such a? I'm talking politically. What's the wisdom of them making such a stink about it? What if they let it pass without comment? Nobody would, nobody would notice. Instead, they've created a political crisis where none need have existed. What would you have written in the Wall Street Journal in 2006 right. if Come a Democratic on. Congress invited the French president to attack George W. Bush? Nancy Pelosi, as the Speaker of the House in 2007, could have done it. Okay. Well, I know, but, yes. but, 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 my question. but would there not have been outrage? Especially the by the Wall Street Journal. Come on, don't, you, don't, please, you can't look me in the eye and tell me. I'd be to totally cool look, with if, that. If they had invited, say, Vladimir Putin after he had inv invaded Georgia or, or done something horrible, yeah, because he would have been a bad guy to invite there. Last I checked, at least nominally and notionally, 
We all agree that Israel is an ally of the United States and a democratic ally, and Prime Minister well, can accept an invitation as from the France would have been, which was my question. Right. France is fine. I like the French. They're an ally, but, <laughs> but no country, no matter how close they are to us, should be making American policy. And we're getting very close on the Iran yeah. issue <laughs> to allowing Israel to write American mm. policy. I'm sorry, didn't David Cameron just come to the United States and admit that he was lobbying individual U.S. senators? on the subject of Iran sanctions. So uh, if you're going to make that argument, then two, two can play the game. I mean, that's what Cameron is doing on behalf of Obama. OK. All right. Thank you very much. Bill has to get to his tutor. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you next week. Thank you very much.